Let's make a spicy garlic white pizza with Swiss chard, serranos, and lime. If you love a white pizza that is cheesy, obviously, garlicky, a little bit of heat on it two ways because we're gonna do a chili garlic oil and the fresh sparkling heat of a lovely green chili. Um, with your greens, your salad on your, on your pizza, you are in luck. That is the pizza we're making today. And in another video, I am showing you how to make your very own homemade pizza dough. Sorry, you need this gratifying moment in your life. Come and watch as I press the dough, baby. That's glorious. This whole process I will walk you through. It's simple, but it requires patience, I will say that. If you don't feel like making your homemade pizza dough, you can definitely go to your pizza parlor, ask them to sell you some dough. You can usually buy it at your supermarket frozen, just let it thaw, and then you're ready to go. Let's make a chili garlic oil. The first thing you're gonna want is four cloves of garlic that we are going to thinly slice and use to infuse olive oil with a little chili flake as well um, to create the base layer of this pizza. We're gonna literally gloss the entire crust with this slightly spicy, fragrant garlic oil. Um, and you can leave the heat off if you're not into the spice. Thinly slicing up four to five cloves of garlic to make our garlic chili oil, which I might add even on its own over pasta with a little breadcrumb. You're in business. Let's add half a cup of olive oil over a medium low heat and add our garlic cloves in. And because I do like it spicy, I am going to add a nice, either a half teaspoon or a teaspoon of chili flake. And let this come up and start to sizzle. We'll cook the garlic like two minutes, maybe up to three. You wanna watch it. We're not looking for a lot of color on here. Maximum, just like a little golden browning. We just want it to start to infuse. And then we're gonna cut the heat and let it sit and really start to build up that flavor. Okay, let's get ourselves totally situated while that starts to cook. I have my lovely bunch of washed Swiss chard leaves. And one of my favorite pieces of this dish is the stem. Do not bother chopping it out or throwing it away. It becomes so tender and lovely. It's not a tough element here. So I like to just give myself little ribbons of the Swiss chard leaves and take it all the way down. And I'm going to use the stems all the way to where the leaves stop forming. This will be lovely texture on our pizza and probably stop, stop like an inch from the bottom because it just starts to get a little bit more bitter than we need, but it's color and it's texture, it's lovely. I hear sizzling. Oh, okay, see how quickly that happens? Look, the garlic and the chili flake. The chili flake is also gonna let the oil start to turn that lovely like ready color. I'm gonna take it over a low heat one more minute and then cut the heat, let it cool. During that cooling process, it will steep and become flavorful and delightful. Um, and I will continue working my way through the serranos next. I like little rings of chili. I find that they are pretty and textural and add the right amount of heat to like each, like every other bite will be really nice and hot and spicy if, if you got the right serrano. Serranos, for the most part, are pretty spicy. You could definitely use a jalapeno instead. You could use a Fresno chili. Um, but what I like about keeping it in ringlets is that then some bites are pops of spice and then you get another like reprieve from just the rich, fatty, cheesy bite and then you go for another spicy bite and then, you know, it's a, a fun little game we play. <laughs> um, so nice thin rings of your Serrano chilies. And I'm going to cut the heat off of our chili oil which is gorgeous and smells fragrant, not burned. Let that cool ever so slightly as it infuses the oil with garlicky perfection and we will start to form our pizza. Let me wash my hands. Okay, go ahead and grab your lovely pizza dough. Ah, oh. this is so good. I'm so proud of you, I'm so proud. Um, and here's one thing you actually wanna do, get ready before your hands are all dirty. Take some semolina flour and just really generously scatter it over your pizza peel. This is gonna help make sure that your pizza does not stick as you try to slide it into the oven. Speaking of the oven, I have mine set to 450 or 500 degrees, as hot as your oven will go. We are sort of mimicking 
the experience of a hot, hot, hot pizza oven, which can get up to 800 degrees even. So as high as you can go is great. And I'm gonna show you how to do this on a pizza stone, which is something you can pick up at most uh, culinary shops. You can buy it online. And it's a great way just to really, it sort of like soaks up the heat and keeps it really hot and concentrated. So it's a great way to turn your normal oven into something that approximates a lovely wood burning pizza oven. Um, and I stuck that pizza stone on the bottom rack as low as it can go because the bottom of your oven is usually the hottest place. And I have let it get hot in there for the last like half hour. You really, this is not a time to skimp on the heat. You want it nice and hot. I'm just using my fingers, something interesting. You would think if you want a flat round that you should use like a bottle or a rolling pin here. Do not. You will squeeze out all the lovely air that the yeast developed in the dough. You will get rid of the chewy, amazing texture that we're hoping to achieve on our lovely pie. You got to do this by hand, which is super fun. Um, and a great thing for the kids to do too. So I'm all I'm doing is sort of working my way around the circle, pressing and pushing into the spherical shape. And once I have that nice sort of like outer boundary formed, that's when I'm going to start doing the gravitational pull with, so I have my fists up. This is a fight with the dough, but not really. Be gentle. It's lovely. Be kind to your dough. And I'm just sort of rotating my fists around that perimeter we created and letting gravity create this lovely, even thickness throughout of beautiful dough. And if you start to see it getting really thin in an area, stop working there. Start, keep moving around and let the rest of the dough stretch itself out and become lovely, thin crust, crispy bottom with that super chewy, beautiful exterior on that crust. My mouth is watering, even just thinking about how fabulous this is gonna be. And, you know, this might take a few times to really nail and master, and that's all good. Okay, that's plenty thin for me. That looks good. Maybe a little bit more. Let's just do a little tiny bit more here at the edge. Okay, working fast. You don't wanna have tears in your dough. All right. Beautiful. Onto your well floured peel. And I assemble my pizza on the peel itself. That way I'm not struggling to lift an assembled pie onto the peel. Save yourself some time. Okay, the first step here is we want a little glossing of our beautiful chili garlic oil. So get yourself a pastry brush, or if you just wanna do it with a spoon, you definitely can. Give it a little swirl in this now golden sort of rust colored chili garlic oil and just paint it on. And this is going to flavor every corner of this pie. And you know, something to keep in mind with all pizza making is you are not looking for an excess of any one thing. This is a beautiful way to create a perfect bite that easily slips into your mouth that brings a wonderful scattering and um, just unity to all your different ingredients, but you don't want too much of any one thing. You're not looking for a soggy, overly heavy crust or um, you know, ingredients that overwhelm each other. You want the perfect balance. Now at this point, you can add cheese first if you want, but I kind of like to bury a little scattering of our Swiss chard underneath that first layer of cheese because I find that this layer will stay nice and juicy. Then the top layer of chard gets a little bit crisper in the oven. It's a nice little textural play that we're very happy to see. Again, using moderation, not going too crazy on any one thing because you're going to have layers here. A little bit of our uh, shredded low moisture mozzarella. And there are not one, not two, but three, four types of cheese going on to this pie. So pace yourself. A little more um, Swiss chard right on top. Let's go ahead and scatter with our lovely serrano peppers. Use as many or as few as you'd like. A little more cheese on top. Now we can go in with some dollops of ricotta. Again, not being too crazy here, just little pops. A few fresh tears of buffalo mozzarella, if you have it. This is not essential, but I do have to say I kind of love the way it melts. And Parmesan, you are in luck that you came today. This is, this is the day that you are going to fall in love with saying goodbye to delivery and hello to homemade pizza. Here is the moment of truth. Can we get this pizza onto the pizza stone without losing half our ingredients? I'm a pizza lover, but I never claimed to be a professional pizza oil. Be bold. No, it's 
be so good. All right, we're gonna let it go like 15 minutes roughly. I will get in there and try to rotate it around being gentle, trying not to lose everything. Okay, so come take a look at this pizza. You'll see, it's been about eight minutes now. The back half is, I'm gonna work fast because I don't wanna lose the heat. The back half is lovely and golden brown back there, you can see, but the front part has a little bit of blandness. So just use your tongs to flip it and then pop it back closed. Seven more minutes to pizza perfection. Pizza's ready. She was in there about 16 or 17 minutes. Grab yourself your peel and your tongs Lift her right out. That is the beauty of the semolina. The semolina stays behind on the on the pizza stone so that your pizza does not. And guys, look at the golden brown, cheesy, Swiss shardy luxury of this pizza. It's beyond, it's beyond. So give it a little brush with your garlic chili oil just around the crust for that extra boost of flavor. Fresh lime. Just a little zesting right over top. Let it rest one minute just so that the cheese is not totally molten so it will be easier to cut. Patience. There's a virtue that I don't possess. Let's cut it. Confidence is key. We're not dragging it back and forth. We are. That's it. Okay. Once through and be firm. gone all the way through your gorgeous firm crust. Oh, yum. Guys, guys, that is the garlicky spicy white pizza with Swiss chard and serranos and lime of your dreams. And mine. I literally have no words. Look at the crust while I think of my words because we made this. Pillowy pockets of airiness and chewiness. Crisp delightfulness underneath. <gasps> mm. Mm. That Swiss chard that just melts in with the cheese. Like I said, those little sort of crusty, crispy pieces, tendrils of Swiss chard here at the top, while the part that's buried under the cheese just melts together. The garlic oil all over top, the pop of heat from the chili, muted by the wonderful fattiness of our ricotta. Okay, let's taste the crust. Mm. The crust is like a garlic knot. You have a garlic knot crust with a salad and a pizza all in one bite. Do you see the pockets of air bubbles back here all through this crust? That is pillowy, chewy, Pizza perfection, pizza deliciousness, pizza prowess. And then, if you were feeling sad because you were getting to the end of your slice, break off your crust. I'm a crust girl anyway, but watch. Break off your crust and dunk it in your garlic chili oil. Mm. And make every single bite pure perfection. If you're not currently doing pizza parties at home, this is your sign to start doing it.